Well, Miles Gallagher, it's good to see you. Uh, for years, you were sitting on this side of the desk, but we've, we've flipped you around, so we have as we look forward to, to a very exciting event. Good to talk to you again, Miles. Good to talk to you, Oshin, and um, I'm not sure what side of the fence I'd like to be on, to tell you the God's truth. <laughs> Maybe you have a better end. Uh, well, listen, you're going to be out in the wind and the rain come uh, Sunday the 20th of November, Miles. It's, of course, the National Senior and uh, Cross Country Championships, which are taking place for just the second time in the county. It's down at the Rossapena Hotel and Golf Resort at the driving range there across the road. And it's been hosted by Cranford AC. Uh, you're going to be part of it too, Miles. It's uh, a very unique and special event to have from for, to the county. And it's a special one for Cranford AC. It certainly is, Oshin. Yeah, the, these championships, uh, cross-country championships, uh, began in 1881. And as you mentioned there, just the second time coming to Donegal and uh, we're delighted to be able to host it in the parish of Meva up here just outside Downings, between Downings and Carrigart. And it's a big day obviously for Cranford Athletic Club, the first club in Donegal founded by uh, Evan Giles and the late Jim Hunter back in 1961. And uh, it's Evan Giles, as you know, still going strong, chairman of the club, top coach and has uh, brought many, many athletes uh, national titles and indeed many of them that were members of Cranford Athletic Club have gone on to be uh, Olympians, internationals, uh, uh, you know, others that have formed clubs. So I suppose you could call him Mr. Athletics in Donegal. Yeah, it certainly is. And it was rightly, of course, uh, honoured with that, Miles, in recent years at the, at the Donegal Sports Star Awards. But uh, this course that's going to be designated and designed out now for, for the national cross countries it's it's nothing new to to cranford ac it's a it's an area that they train on regularly down there and uh it's it's in good condition it's i suppose it's a good surface that links type surface at a at a driving range and at a golf course uh is very much suited to cross country running miles that sure is you you were down yourself for the legends tour down there at the rosa Pena. And you saw the, the type of terrain that's there. Well, it's exactly the same across the road at the driving range. Uh, I suppose we had to get a, a venue. Uh, Evan and the club have been down in the Rosapena for 25 plus years, courtesy of the Casey family. Evan uh, asked the question again, any chance of um, having an event down there? I think my brother Jerry was heavily involved as well. And they took a look at... Uh, the venue across the road and experts came and looked at it to see would it be suitable and uh, they gave it a thumbs up big time because of the type of terrain that's there and they'll have a nice compact 1500 meter course uh, divided into a thousand meters and 500 meters and the emphasis now is on fast running cross country as distinctive uh, what used to be in the good old days when we were trying to run through muck uh, up to the knees, uh, but nowadays it's about speed because the this will lead on to the European Cross Country Championships, which will be taking place in Turin three weeks after uh, the event in, in Downings. So uh, it's ideal from that point of view. And it, it's, I suppose, in the long run, a lot of these athletes are also track runners, so that will help them as well. So it'll be good for their endurance along the way and then good for their trackability later on. Yeah, you mentioned about the, I suppose, the delegation from Athletics Ireland, which have come to Donegal and come to Ross Apenna to, to look at the course. And uh, one man that was part of that is a Donegal man, of course, Paddy Marley. He'd be quite happy to be seeing the event coming to the Northwest. Yes, a, a former Cranford Athletic Club member. He joined uh, Eamon and the gang way back in the, let's say, early to mid-60s, uh, subsequently went to Dublin, uh, I asked him the question, did you go to Dublin for work in, in 69 or did you, well actually it was earlier, or did you go uh, f to compete in athletics? And he said it was to compete in athletics. And uh, he was a very happy man when he made the Irish international team in the 1500 metres against Switzerland back in 69. But uh, he's now uh, a, a well-recognised uh, official with uh, Athletics Ireland is on the competitions committee and it's the competitions committee that uh, run this uh, event. So he had the, the right and the honour, as had um, Brendan McDade of Letterkenny Athletic Club. 
he also was on the senior uh, committee and uh, they were part of the team came down. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Mark Connolly of Finn Valley is on the juvenile committee. So it just shows the influence that Donegal athletes have and, and, and organisers have in Athletics Ireland. They, they have mushroomed from that first beginning of Cranford Athletic Club to be a very high powered people uh, in athletics. So they came anyway, delighted with the course, beautiful day when they were there and uh, to give Cranford the go ahead and uh, a lot of work went in to the action since and there will be a lot more between now and the 20th of November. Yeah, you might just give us an idea, Miles, of sort of the manpower and maybe the women power that's that, that's needed for this on the, on the volunteer front because Cranford are, are hosting it. They're going to need help from, I suppose, other clubs w within the county. And there's a huge uh, number of officials that are, that are coming in to make sure that this event runs smoothly as well, Miles. Well, yeah, there sure is. For example, in relation to Athletics Ireland, they have 70 officials coming to the area to run the show. You know, you wouldn't expect... Um, Novices, let's call us uh, from the point of view an, of a national event to be running uh, such a big event. So they are coming to run the show, but they need 80 volunteers from the local club. So there are many, there are many streams to the whole thing. I, if I just could give you a, an idea of some of the things that are required. For example, you're going to, this is now above and beyond the actual course. So you have parking and traffic management. We are supposed to uh, and will supply at least 1,500 car parking facilities, 1,500. So what's happening in relation to that is that the, the local voluntary fire service, probably the only one in Ireland, the Irish Coast Guard Monroe unit based in the parish, they're based in Downings, fire service in, based in Carrigard, and the Garda Shiochana are coming together to put that traffic management system in place with volunteers from the club as well. So that's only one example. You have then going to have the presentation area has to be built, the registration check-in area, the chip timing, obviously a big factor, the results area, the first aid area, we're going to have to have two ambulances on site as well as first aid people, uh, the gate, a big area as well, the entrance, the different people, the athletes have to get in a certain way, the spectators have to get in a certain way, there's going to be, uh, you're going to have to buy your ticket online to get in. So that's only an example of some of the things that are required to host the thing. There's going to be catering as well, has to be done, uh, possibly outsiders, possibly uh, within the, the group themselves. So but we have the leaders. The leaders are there. They've been there, done that, and it will be a great success. And hopefully, the weather will be reasonably good. Yeah, and any any visitors coming to the county will obviously get a the great Donegal welcome that that, that they always do, Miles. And uh, from those that are competing, I suppose Letter Kenny and uh, Finn Valley, who were successful in twenty twenty one, it's now in their home county. They'll looking. They'll be looking to defend titles that they won. They certainly will. Maybe if I just uh, run through uh, how the Donegal athletes, this is the senior athletes, and we'll maybe mention the underage as well later. But the senior women last year, Letter Kenny Athletic Club, uh, were the winners. They defeated Leeville fairly tight. I think there was 11 points in the difference. So Letter Kenny uh, defending their championship down in uh, the Rasapena. The senior ladies were Michelle Finn of Leeville Athletic Club. She is an Olympian. She was the winner last year. Roisin Flanagan, the Tyrone lady running for Finn Valley, she finished in third. And Anne-Marie McGlynn of Letterkenny finished in sixth. And the, the combination of all the Donegal female athletes won the inter-county, beating Cork and Dublin. So it's not every day that uh, Donegal are going to be able to beat two big cities like Cork and Dublin. And in the junior women's event, Finn Valley were the winners last year from Yahal uh, down in Cork and Ennis Track Club. So again, they'll be defending their title uh, down in the Rosapena. So uh, 
And there will be others, athletics very strong in Donegal, and as well as the seniors and under 20s and under 23s, you also have uh, the under 12, 14, 16, 18. It's, it's uh, even age group competition. And as you know, on a Sunday after Sunday from Fatsy McGonigal, uh, Donegal athletes do very well in Ulster and indeed in national competition. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking here, Miles, we're talking about Letterkenny and Fun Valley. We can't forget about the host Cranford. They'll be looking to put up a, a big show on their home turf, so they will. Well, they will indeed. And uh, they competed in the Ulster Championships uh, under 12 to under 18. There was uh, eight races in total and two of the winners, the individual winners, came from the Cranford Athletic Club. So that's 25%. Uh, <laughs> As numbers of athletes competing against the rest, they didn't have 25%. So they were punching away above their weight and uh, they qualified a, a team and many individuals as well to compete for either the club or the county or indeed province. In that age group, uh, you're talking about provinces as well. So they have three chances of bringing national medals to the to the area. Yeah, on the on the international front, Miles, as we know, last year Ireland picked up gold in the under twenty three men, and they also had silver as well in the under on the under twenty. Uh, and there's several of those athletes will be coming back uh, to try and retain national titles and medals that they won at a, at a, at a national level. So it, it makes it even uh, more competitive when you take it outside of the local runners. What do we expect from those who are coming from, uh, I suppose, a level where they have already uh, tasted success at, at a European level? Exactly. So, Oshin, it, it just shows uh, the standard of the sport uh, in a, on a European basis when you have an Irish team under 23 winning the international under 23 and as you say the under 20s finish in the second place and in that under 23 team uh, many of them are actually eligible to compete again so they'll be fighting among themselves first of all to get on the Irish team I think it's the first three are automatically selected and then it's up to the to the team selection thereafter because some of these athletes uh, it could be a scholarship in America and so on but it just shows the standard that can I make a comparison? I'm not running down soccer. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, the point is that you may remember there very recently, Ireland were trying to qualify for the European Under-21 Soccer Championships to get to the finals for the first time ever. And here we have at the roughly the same age, Under-23s, winning European titles. So that's the level that they're at. So anybody that's anxious to see top-class athletics live the place to be is the Rosa Pena Golf Resort driving range on the 20th of November. Yeah, I know we mentioned Eamon, Eamon Giles at the start. He, he doesn't get too excited about things, Miles, does he? Well, if you're at the job for 61 years, you seem to be able to handle all that <laughs> uh, at your ease, as it were. It's not that he's not uh, passionate about it, because I can assure you he has been passionate for the last 61 years and uh, well, it shows in the results and it rubs off on the results. And I'll give you a good example, <laughs> a little bit of a, 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 a I suppose, uh, an ad from the from Cranford Athletic Club podcast. We I've been speaking with uh, Amber Barrett uh, very recently. It will be going up on uh, Cranford's YouTube and Facebook page, and. She gave a glowing recommendation for what she did as an athlete before she turned to soccer and how it's actually helping her now in her soccer. You, you know, she got that wonder goal that takes uh, the Irish team to the, the World Championships in Australia and New Zealand. But she gave a glowing recommendation to what Evan had done. And, and even in the training that she does now in Germany, uh, she's using tips that Eamon gave her back in the day. Brilliant, brilliant. Delighted to hear that. And uh, Eamon, of course, will be would have been very, very proud of Amber her, and her, her recent achievements. And we'll be speaking to Eamon in, in the coming days ahead of the event. And another man we'll be speaking to as well, Miles, is uh, Mr. John Cronin, President of Athletics Ireland, a native again to the, to the parish down there. And then he, he moved away from home. But 
with him being president and now a national event in the county as well, it's it's huge for him and his tenure. It sure is, yeah. It's 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 a great honour uh, for the whole area. Yes, that John has done so well. Well, John showed leadership qualities back in uh, PCC Falcara as a as a 14, 15, 16 year old. He kind of took on the the mantle of uh, organising athletics down there. He took that forward then to uh, UCG as it was back then, uh, and he was on the last winning cross country team from UCG to win the Interversity until two years ago. Uh, they won it again and they actually defended it there this year. So uh, then he went to Tullamore Harriers where he moved up the ladder. There was a Patty Larkin there, that uh, fantastic man for athletics. He built the stadium down in Tullamore uh, without uh, any state uh, assistance back then. He became moved up the ladder, became chairman went on then to, to Leinster and moved up the ladder there and eventually became uh, president of Athletics Ireland. And uh, it's, uh, it's great that, it's, that he's coming home to uh, his own parish as president of that organisation. Certainly is. Listen, Miles, we'll be talking more closer to the time about the National Cross Country Championships, which are coming back to uh, Donegal after a 23-year absence. You're going to have a, a busy number of weeks as well. Always good to see you, Miles, and good to talk to you. The same to you, Oshin, and we certainly will see, and I'm sure you'll be down to uh, to to the venue on that Sunday to report back. And uh, can I just mention that uh, uh, another group are coming here. That's uh, Eileen Wagner and RTE. She's coming down uh, the week before to do a better recording and she'll be down on the Sunday. And of course we have live streaming. It's the first time uh, the senior cross country championships will have live streaming and uh, eight out of 10 productions uh, from Milford, Peter O'Donnell's the man behind that. He'll have five cameras, a drone, uh, a commentator at the venue, commentator on stream. It's, we're trying to push the boat out as best we can. But you're going to tell me is putting you under helicopter miles for commentary. <laughs> no, I'm not doing any commentary. Uh, listen, Miles, good to see you. All the bases covered there. Good man. Talk to you soon, Miles. Thank you, Oshin. Thanks now. Bye bye.